Now we're going to talk about renovation. At the end of every soccer season, it's vital to revitalise the top surface of the pitch. This has to be done by firstly removing all the dead and decaying grass and trying to get as level a surface ready to introduce new materials and new seed to the top surface. As time has moved on in recent years, so too has the equipment in this area of our work. And we're going to look at the machine now for cleaning the top surface. This is a field top maker and is fitted with a verticutting reel. This machine can do one of two things. It can remove all of the grass off the field if the pitch has had a really bad season and needs to be cleaned up completely. Or if the sward is decent, it can be cleaned by using a verticutting reel such as the one here. This machine will cut at 34 mm gaps down to a depth of 50 mm and will take all of the grass out of the, 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 the sward here, up these elevators and onto a trailer, leaving as clean a surface as possible. On an average size football field, this can be as much as 50 tonne of material and leaves a nice clean surface from which to work. It's very slow and requires to be done in as dry a condition as possible. Any type of operation like this, it's very important to make an assessment of what the machine has done. And again, by using a simple rule, I can test the depth of the cuts by slipping the rule down into the cut there. I can see this is cutting at around 15 millimetres and I know over an average size field with calculations this is going to take some 50 tonne of dead and decaying material out. I can also make a good assessment of the material right at the beginning of the renovation. By smelling, I'm, I'm looking for souring because by pure surface drainage. In this case, this isn't the case, but it's a very simple observation. And again, you don't have to be an expert to carry that out. Once the field is verticut, we would then carry out a cleaning of the surface, a brushing. That all this debris would then be removed and taken from site, leaving an entirely clean surface from which to work forward from. The majority of success of any renovation on any natural field will come from the rejuvenation of the root zone. This will largely be focused in the upper 150 mil or 6 inches of the pitch and the selection of equipment is vital to ensure that success. One of the machines available to groundsmen on the market today is this Coro recycling dresser. This machine will dig down to depths of 6 inches, the smaller version. Larger versions can fetch material from as deep as 10 inches into the sward or 250 mil. The material is then brought to the surface via the elevator and left lying on the top. It can then be integrated with new sands or new root zones, thoroughly mixed on the top and then sent back down into the root zone, preventing it going into a layer. This then creates an excellent medium for rooting to develop and the plants then to take on from there. Machines such as the recycling dresser can fetch as much as 21 tonnes of material from inside the pitch. You can measure quite simply again by using a rule the depth of the cut. I can see from here I'm cutting between four and a half to five inches, approximately 125 mil down into the sward, and I know I'm going to fetch up approximately 20 to 21 tonnes of material. It's an ideal opportunity also then to create the access for the new material to be safely integrated into the, into the pitch top without building up any new layers. So it's very important that you do that. Layering can cause serious problems with rooting which can lead to destabilisation of the surface later in the season. The modern day stadium environment has become a harsh place to grow grass to the highest standard. The natural elements of air and light have become a major problem for groundsmen in helping to produce the grass. We still are a winter sport and we play in the darker months, so it's vital that we get light onto key areas such as goldmouse, particularly goldmouse that would be at the south end. We've developed this light unit here to help us to do that. The light unit is not one that they, we would normally have bought. We would have liked to have had some of the bigger ones, such as the Dutch concept or the Norwegian concept. But we can't afford this, and many clubs are in our position. But this shouldn't deny clubs the opportunity to have these lights. This has been made by our own team in the stadium and the ground staff and saves the grass here. Before we had this unit two years ago, we would have had to re-turf this area in January, costing many thousands of pounds. But for the last two years, we haven't had to do this and we've been able to maintain a decent well-grassed level surface which is safe to play on and looks good in the stadium also. These lights are typical horticulture lights that are used for the production of green plants in glasshouses and can be easily sourced by any club anywhere in Europe. The unit is light and portable and can be moved around the pitch in the key areas promoting grass growth.
about overseeding. At some stage of every season, and as, probably as part of a renovation, there's going to be the need to seed the pitch. You can do this in one of two ways. You can direct drill, or you can over sow using a saddle roller type machine. Without doubt, the strongest plant will always be achieved by drilling seed, ideally into a depth of about four to five millimetres into the top. This allows the seed to go in and germinate freely, allowing the shoot to develop before coming above the surface and in general giving a stronger type plant. Renovations with seeding will probably happen towards the end of the regular football season. Most of the machines available on the market today will require more than one pass over the pitch to achieve the volume of seed required to try and get a uniform covering of grass. The Verticeed is a very close centre seeder, seeding at around 30 millimetre centres, and it is possible with one pass over the entire surface area to insert the correct volume of seed to produce a top quality football pitch. As well as the correct selection of machine to insert the seed into the pitch, the selection of the seed itself is very important. The selection of seed is a very specialised process and most top field managers across Europe will be working very closely with our seed house. There are several reputable seed houses across Europe who can help the field manager to put together the right mixture of grasses. You would never go with one particular cultivar of grass, you would always choose a selection of cultivars. Most typical in Northern Europe would be English dwarf rye grasses, and you would use four or five cultivars in a mix that would then be shown on a label such as this. This label contains so much good information, and it doesn't matter in what country you buy the seed, you must have this label. I keep these labels for a year until the seed has grown and there's been proven to be no problems from the germination. On the label, you will get the cultivar mix and the percentage that it exists within the mix. You'll get the country of origin and you'll get the date of mixing. That information is vital to know that you have healthy seed that's been freshly harvested and that is properly rated for your use. Both seeders that were demonstrated had lovely clean finishes. This assists with the quick turnaround on the fields. I would expect to be playing on the fields within two to three weeks from an over sowing like that. And such a renovation that you see the equipment working on, the turnaround time in complete terms is four to six weeks. This minimises the downtime and allows training centres such as this one to function throughout the year. About top dressing. Top dressing is another one of these practices that's vital if the field is to be maintained in tip-top condition. It's essential to top dress to maintain the surface levels that will aid the ball movement and the player traction over the surface. It's also essential to top dress to help to integrate sand and new root zone materials into the top surface to help to keep air movement freely and to help water infiltration rates stay high so in periods of heavy rain water can pass freely through the top surface. There are many different sands in the world but the most sands that are categorised for the Houston sports field come under the classification of the USGA spec. This is a specification that's deemed from the United States Greens Association, which governs the world of professional golf. But so thorough is that specification, it's been adopted worldwide for use in sports turf. Sands will generally fall into a medium fine or medium coarse category for use. And it's essential that when you select the sand, that you have the sand tested in a laboratory, that you know the pH of the sand, and you know the particle size distribution of the sand before you make that purchase. Typical dressings on soccer pitches during the periods of renovations can range anywhere between 40 to 100 tonnes. The upper end of that is a very heavy dressing and can smother new grass. I much prefer to dress in volumes of around 45 to 50 tonnes maximum at any one time and then work that in. You can always make a second dressing. It's also a good practice to dress through the season, doing little and often. So roughly every five to six weeks, applying five to 10 tonne, minimal amount of sand over a pitch is very quickly lost in a dense sward. And you can brush that in afterwards so it's not visible to the players. Any time that you apply sand to a football pitch, it's essential that you work the sand in. You've only done half the job in getting the sand from the stockpile onto the pitch. Tools such as this level loot here can aid that greatly. You can do it either by using a loot or by a brush. 
but this tends to get a much even spread into the, into the top of the pitch. Pitches that have a covering of grass on them will be more receptive to taking sand in, as the, as the grass actually helps to hold the sand in place. This acts as a big knife, spreading the sand evenly over the surface. You couldn't spread sand and not do this. You have to do this levelling, either by brush or by the bar. The best results after sanding and blading will always be when the sand is at its driest. It, uh, it's essential to try and bring the leaf of the grass up through the sand to prevent it being smothered. In order to achieve this, you'll always have to make more than one pass over the sand and trying to get in many different directions as possible. I find that the best results are usually achieved by three passes, one straight pass and then two diagonal passes. This tends to ensure that the sand is moved into all the low areas on the surface, bringing the surface levels back up to their normal level. The most important areas on any football pitch are the goal areas, and sometimes it's not possible or practical to take machines in there. You therefore have to resort to doing work by hand. Hand aeration should be always be done from a board, using border forks, short length tines, no more than maybe eight to nine inches into the ground. The two guys working on the board and turning the board in the width of itself and then coming forward to put in another series of holes. This can be done from the goal line out to the six yard line and then can be turned to work across the goal to complete a complete matrix of holes. This is ideal for relieving compaction from a game or for allowing water to go through the goal mouth ahead of a game, keeping the area dry and safe and in the best playing condition for goalkeepers. Small damage also is vital to repair. There is no machine that can do this for us and the use of small forks like this is probably one of the most important jobs we would do in the stadium. It can take a long time. On a natural field such as this one, it can take as long as three to four days after each game to pick up all the damage from that particular game. One of the many problems for groundsmen in goal areas is the damage caused by goalkeepers. It's unavoidable as the keeper takes the goal kicks. Damage such as this here, where the level of the grass is broken, if it goes unattended, can, can result in bad bubbles of the ball, even the ball ending up in the goal itself. By using simple tools like this, we can make a, an instant transfer by taking a nine inch square block from, from out from the goal line and transferring it from an area from behind the goal. It's important when we do this to make the level back the same so that when the keeper comes to kick again, he's kicking from a level piece of ground. The four plates are hammered into the same depth, ensuring that it's an even, uniform cut from the pitch. The damaged area of turf is then transplanted to the rear of the goal.